called Crime Story. That was based. That was based on me. They and Dennis Franz was the star, right here. TV series, Chicago Chicago Story. I mean Chicago Story, where he was a cop and there was he was a foot cop in Wicker Park. Oh. And, uh, they copied that right. I, uh, and then and then the Lambert Tree Carter Harrison. Well, I received so many awards, but that one isn't. People ask me about um, in my career. I, you know, I, I stopped counting them, but mm -hmm. I know I, I know I have probably two hundred fifty awards on. I mean, so much, so much stuff. One day, a photographer came to my house, and and they were, and they wanted to know, they wanted to see some of the awards that I had. So I said, my wife, you feel like carrying them down from the attic? She said, sure. She says, let's go get them. The guy walked in. They were in probably in four rooms. He says, "This policeman did all this stuff in his career." My wife says, "Yeah, and maybe more." And it, that was on. That was all on TV. That was on a program. I got them listed somewhere, but I don't remember exactly which one was because these reporters would do stories about me. Yeah, and there's a lot of them. But so, uh, okay, well. Uh, you talked about uh, Italian uh, Italians making good cops. Great. What cops. is it in the Italian American experience that you think gave them the extra edge? You talked about. It's compassion. Compassion is number one. Street knowledge is number two. Because in the old days, Italians that came from the neighborhoods. They were street smart. They could sense danger. They could sense. Bad, good, bad, good, bad guys. They, they had a way of. When you walked into a joint, you had five, five, ten guys in there, and they, you were policemen. Yet. Someone walked in the door, they knew who walked in the door, what he walked away looked like. Nowadays, you'd be in a place, you're sitting there. People walk in, others don't even know. They're just not aware, and they just don't care. I, I, I don't want to ever give any coppers. Uh, I don't want to shed a bad light on any coppers, but the, poli the Italian policeman, he had the senses to see to see danger. He could feel that something wasn't right. He had the compassion, and he had the know-how to react, and he did react. There's a lot of things, you know, you put all of that together and you say, well, that's what every policeman should do. If every policeman in our country did that, we have great police forces, but uh, that's... Did they learn this in family life, in more neighborhood in life? More in family life and neighborhood than anything. It's common ex experience. It's, it's like when they say to a copper, well, you didn't have a lot of education. No, but I had a lot of street knowledge. And, and what do they call it when you earn it on the street? It's, it's another, it's... Uh, Envi work environment, uh, you get you get uh, credits for it. Oh, okay. You know, and I've gone I've gone and talked to people at these universities. They said you get a doctorate experience in, the, in all the things that you've done. And, and but you've and, never <coughs> gone beyond high school. Never, never. I had about a, a year in the service where they give you enough. Credits for I think one year, because I did a lot of different things when I was in there. But, and oh, you didn't tell us about your time in the military. Were you a, an army man? Or? I was in the army. I was in the army infantry. I was in. I was in the tank division. I was in the artillery division. I was in. I was in the, a regular covert a place on the DMZ. We were stationed right on the DMZ. We could see the North Koreans walking out the other side. And they this is in us. the late 50s? This is in Korea. No, this was in 1963. No, after the war. Okay. When they established the, the, the military, so the DMZ, or not a, mm -hmm. call it something else, but that's the dividing line between North and South Korea. Mm -hmm. I was basically stationed right there for my... Um, for most of the time, then I came home and I went to all different military posts in uh, the U.S. I was in Fort Knox, I was in Fort Jackson, I was in Fort Hood. Um, that was 
after you became a policeman? Between 1962 and that was before. Yeah, from 1962 to 1964. Mm -hmm. And I became a policeman in 1968. Okay. And, uh, uh, so. Uh, what about uh, within the ranks of the police department? Uh, did you find that uh, Italians were well treated, you know, got their uh, promotions? Uh, uh, they don't get promoted well, unless you have a lot of connections, but on street experience, there should have been a lot of Italian Americans that were in high position for what they did and not for who they knew. Mm -hmm. um, you, were you, uh, you were part of the department when uh, Joe D was. Uh, yes, he was there. He was, he was for a while, he was, he was like that superintendent. Super yeah. uh, for a while. Yeah. Uh, he died a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, did you know him? I knew of him. I met him a couple of times, and they, on some cases I would see him, but I wasn't a close friend of his. And I didn't know much about what he did or he didn't do. I know that uh, he went up the ranks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And he did some things, uh, investigative work, that I read about that was good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, so we're in the into the sixties. We, we were talking earlier. Maybe recount your uh, experiences in the nineteen sixty eight uh, demonstrations against the war in Chicago. Democratic convention. Yeah, sure. we we were there on the front lines. And if I started naming everybody, you'd see that they really did utilize a lot of Italian policemen in the front line because they they. We were in a lot of districts, and we were active on street enforcement. I mean, the, the Italian police officer that was a street guy wasn't a prima donna. He, he didn't get, like I said, he didn't get promoted very well because he didn't know too many people. Uh, you know, uh, connections have a lot to do with it, and I don't agree with that. I think if, if it's, it's like when I talk about my career as a policeman, I don't care where the guy is from and what he did, he'll never ever in a million years match mine. Because I've tried, I've challenged guys from every department and say, give me a chance, I'll, I'll prove to you what I can do. And I make a statement that they really don't like. It was in one of the suburbs where guys give me a hassle on this and that. And I said, well, I, I think I'm better than most of the guys that come here because I've done it all. I've done everything in the police department. And I will make a, I will make a wager, not a money wager, but just a, a, a deal where you'll take two people that are want to be the, the superintendent or the, or the chief of police in your town. You'll take me and you'll take a stranger that you say has this high education and is highly recommended. I says, we will split the town in half. A year later, you will take both of you guys. We'll both work part time, and we won't charge you a lot of money to do this. We'll take my section of the city and take his section of the city. The one that has the least crime is going to be the new chief of police. Mm -hmm. Every challenge I gave in all the suburbs, not one of them wanted to challenge me. I, said, I don't care. I'll do it for nothing. I, just to show, I says, in a year I'll have a pretty good job. Never, they wouldn't accept the challenge because they know that. That one guy looked at this and he was like, oh my God, one of the guys in this, he says, I'm going up against this guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but he, yeah. had, he had a different agenda. Uh, so what about politics? Did you get involved in politics? 